So it's been a little while since I've made anything air powered, such as this air powered car. And if you're one of my subscribers, you probably would have seen the video. Uh, but if not, I'll post a link to it in the description below. Essentially, there were some issues with the car running at pressures above about 30 psi due to the design of the air inlet valve. And also because this engine is only a plastic piston running inside a plastic cylinder, uh, it wasn't probably sealed with any kind of o-ring, which also meant the engine was relatively inefficient. So at pressures below 30 psi where it could run, it didn't run for very long because it couldn't deal with the high pressures. And I think the longest distance it travelled was maybe 20 metres or so, up the end of my patio and back and a, and a little bit more. Um, so it wasn't really that impressive. But I want to try and take a different approach. Instead of using the air engine which I designed for my aircraft, which would spin really fast and turn the wheels a bit slower, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use syringes, which basically have a, a rubber plunger inside a tightly sealed cylinder and they pretty much leak no air when you, when you seal off the end of them. So I'm thinking these will be a perfect uh, efficiency increaser, if you could call it that, uh, to this air engine. But it's probably best if I explain this by looking at the Fusion 360 CAD model. So let's go have a look at that. So here is the Fusion 360 CAD model of the air powered car. Uh, as you can see at first glance, it looks a little bit ridiculous uh, with the huge rear wheels and the tiny front wheels. However, there is the mechanical reason for that, which I'll go into in a second. Now, you can also see the plastic bottle in the centre here, which is the same as what my old air pad car had. Uh, essentially, the reservoir which will hold the compressed air for powering the engine and hopefully moving the car forwards. Now, let me remove that out of the way, and you should be able to see there are three syringes throughout the car. Now, the outermost syringes will act as the piston and cylinder, or cylinders, which will therefore drive the rear wheels and hopefully move the car forwards and the centre syringe will act as the inlet and outlet valve system for controlling the airflow to and from these outermost cylinders. Now I'm going to remove the chassis so that we can see the pistons a bit better and hopefully I should be able to rotate the rear wheel and therefore you can see all the pistons moving. Now as you can see the outermost uh, cylinders and pistons they're 180 degrees out of phase so when one is fully contracted the other one is fully expanded. And the reason for this is that syringes have quite a high amount of friction and therefore once they're fully expanded to push them all the way back in uh, I don't think a flywheel or the, the forward momentum of the car would be able to push that back in. So the other piston is there to not only drive the car forwards but also push the other cylinder back in. So the way this valve system works is it is 90 degrees out of phase from these pistons and cylinders. So if you have a look when, these, when one of the pistons is fully contracted over here, one of the pistons is fully expanded, this is actually halfway through its cycle. Whereas when both of the pistons are at the centermost point, this is either at one end, or for example, if I rotate it around again, it's now at the other end of its cycle. So it's 90 degrees out of phase. Now the way that this controls the airflow to and from these outermost cylinders is basically the airflow from the bottle enters this middle hole here, this is where the air input is, and then these two holes are linked to either one of these cylinders. I believe this hole here is linked to this syringe here, and this hole here is linked to this syringe here. They'll be just mounted to the front of the syringe like that. Now how this works is there is two uh, pistons inside this syringe, basically two of these rubber black things, two seals, and this section which has the blue part inside of it will be filled with compressed air from the bottle. Now as the engine rotates, these two pistons will move forwards and now this frontmost hole is exposed to the high pressure air inside of there. Therefore blowing air through this hole and then into the uh, cylinder on this side of the car. Therefore causing that piston to expand. As you can see, it's now moving outwards. Now when the piston gets to its outermost expanded state, which is about there, this piston has now slid back past this hole and closed that valve. Then as the piston starts to contract back inwards, as you can see it's coming inwards now, this hole is now in this volume here, which is actually open to the, uh, uh, the outer atmosphere, as you can see here. So basically the airflow that was inside here is now flowing back through this hole and out through the front of this syringe. 
I hope this makes sense. It's quite difficult to describe, but if I just slowly rotate the engine round, you should be able to get an idea. Just remember that the center hole is the air inlet, and then these are both linked to either one of these cylinders. And it should rotate like that. Now let's bring the chassis back into it. Now the reason for the large rear wheels and the tiny front wheels is actually because with my previous air powered car, I used a very high uh, revving engine, one that would rotate really fast, and I would gear it down so that it would drive the wheel uh, slightly slow, slower. Um, so I can't remember what the gear ratio was, but the engine would spin really quick and then the wheel would obviously spin a lot slower. Whereas with this, I want it to be the opposite. So the syringe expands really slowly, but moves the car a long distance. So instead of using a gear ratio where I'd use a large gear down to a small gear on the wheel, I thought why not just link the piston straight to the rear wheel, but have a really small offset from the center of the axis and then a huge diameter wheel. So I think um, one rotation of this wheel is, I think it's like half a meter or something. Yeah, so one rotation of this wheel will push the car one, no, will push the car half a meter forwards. Uh, which is quite a lot for just one expansion of, well no, two, two expansions of the syringe. So in terms of the actual amount of volume used per meter travelled, um, I think it would use about three and a half milliliters in each syringe. Uh, so times that by two, six milliliters. So it'd use about 12 milliliters of air volume per meter travelled, hopefully. Um, that's considering there's no leaks. So that is basically it for the design of this air powered car. Um, there's still a few things I need to work on like the steering mechanism, uh, but I think I'll work on that whilst I'm printing out some other stuff. So um, yeah, let's get on with some printing. Right, I apologize for the audio. However, I've just come across a fundamental flaw in this air powered car. And unfortunately, it's not something that I can easily fix. And it's actually not, nothing to do with my design. It's to do with these syringes. I thought that because they're relatively small diameter and the wall thickness of the actual cylinder is quite thick, it's thicker than a plastic bottle, I thought they'd be able to withstand quite high pressures. However, they must be made out of some kind of soft plastic because I've decided to make the air inlet and exhaust valve system first just to test it doesn't leak. And when I increase the pressure, not even that high, if I increase it up to about I said about 15 psi, yeah, just under 20 psi. The sidewalls of the syringe are bulging already at 20 p less than 20 psi, which is why I've got my safety goggles on. Which means that if I were to increase it to well 60 to 100 psi, which is what I'd hoped, this could be incredibly unsafe and well, obviously won't work. So I've run into a bit of an issue. I say it, but it's pretty much wrecked this whole project. Now my shed looks more like a drug den with all these syringes because it's definitely not clean enough to be a hospital. <sighs> what a nightmare. So I hope you guys can forgive me for this because I've cheated on this project just a slight bit. Because my design wasn't working with the syringes, uh, not being able to withstand the pressure, I've decided to buy an air power engine car kit. Uh, which is actually quite an interesting toy. Uh, it's made for ages 10 plus, uh, of which, believe it or not, I'm allowed to build. Um, and here is what I pressurized earlier. Ta-da. Yeah, it's, um, it's quite an interesting uh, car, actually. It runs a slider valve like what I ran in uh, my car. However, it runs two slider valves, one valve per cylinder, which you can see the cylinders down here. And um, it's also geared up to the rear wheel, like what I wanted to do where one, rotation, one cycle of the piston equals about eight cycles of the rear wheel. So it travels quite a big distance if I pump it up. It's also got a built-in pump, which is quite cool. So one cycle of the piston should launch it to the other side of this disc. So yeah, it goes, goes quite well. Uh, but what I'm thinking is uh, it needs some upgrades because at the moment it's pretty much just the same as any wind-up car you have where you pump it up a little bit, put it on the kitchen floor and it flies across the room and hits the wall. So what I'm thinking is make a mount for a larger plastic bottle so the engine can run for longer 
and then put a radio controlled steering rack on it so that we can turn it around and avoid obstacles. So uh, let's do that in three, two, one. So there we have it. The radio controlled air powered car is complete. Uh, I've designed the steering column at the front here, which I can control using my radio control. It's all 3D printed at the front with a very small radio control plane servo um, using two linkages to the uh, steering pivots. Uh, I've also 3D printed this rear mount at the back here for this uh, larger bottle. Uh, I've got the angle slightly off, so it's pointing up a little bit, but that's not really an issue. Um, there's a tube that goes straight from the bottle into the engine rather than having that whole T-junction pressure valve system at the back. Uh, because that was a bit unnecessary and I got rid of the built-in pump because it's a very small pump and would take forever to uh, pump this bottle up to pressure so I'm going to use the valve at the front here uh, to pressurize this bottle using a proper bike pump so uh, yeah let's go find uh, a large floor and uh, give it a test okay so I've got the air pad car and I've got the radio control gear all set up just need to fill it up with some air got my bike pump here and I'm going to pump it up to, I don't know what kind of pressure to pump it up to because um, the pressure gauge that it comes with doesn't show a value in terms of PSI. So I'm just gonna guess on this, maybe try, I'm gonna try 30 PSI. Okay, that works, but I've seen it go faster on the old pressure gauge. So maybe we'll try a bit higher pressure. How about we try, let's try 40 PSI. Right, so set the car down here, get my radio, and in three, two, one. It's working, it's working. Oh, struggles around the corner. Right, I just realized the camera can't see it that low, so let me aim it down a little bit. Right, let's increase the pressure a bit more, see if we can get some more speed out of this thing. Right, that's 60 PSI. I haven't pumped it up this high yet. And I can hear, I can hear nothing leaking. That was a bike pump leaking. So I have a feeling for this, I need to move the pump out of the way. Check the camera angle can see all the weight. And we'll give it a push. Three, two, one. Much better, look at that. What am I doing? <laughs> it's running for ages. Wow. It won't stop. <laughs> I need to put a throttle on this. I can't cut it out unless I hit the wall. It sounded like something just bust. What has happened? Oh, it's the frames just falling apart. I, uh, I haven't put screws in the frame since modifying it. So it's just popped apart. Right, there we go. So I fixed the frame, it's literally just popped apart, so I need to put some screws in there. It should still be still working. Still got plenty of air left in it. I need a bigger space because just about got enough turning radius to do one turn. 
a figure of eight just about. Ooh. No, I'm going to hit the wall. Oh, no. Okay, it's run out. When you get to the lower pressure, as soon as you turn, you lose all of the speed. This is still going off of 60 PSI and a two liter water bottle. This is an impressive range. Starting to slow down now. I don't know what to say. That was really impressive. <laughs> So still has plenty of air in there to keep running, just not quite enough to uh, obviously push it around. But that works actually really well. Tell you what, let's go back to the shed and uh, make a conclusion to this video. Actually first, I just wondered what would happen if I pull this tube out. <laughs> air powered car. <laughs> So there we have it, a radio controlled air powered Amazon toy car. I'm very impressed with the way it ran in the end and obviously very impressed with the initial design of the car. Uh, I was really impressed with the way the slider valves worked um, and I can definitely say that even if I got my uh, syringes to properly uh, seal and also not bulge under the pressure, they wouldn't run as well as these uh, pistons and cylinders do. These uh, are completely sealed at 60 PSI as I tested it up to and uh, they don't seem to um, have much friction at all. I can easily move that whereas a syringe um, is very tight seal between the plunger and the cylinder. Um, so yeah, the way they've got those tolerances uh, made up work really well. So I'm obviously a bit frustrated that my design of car wasn't feasible in the end. Uh, I put a lot of time and effort into coming up with the valve system and then obviously designing it in uh, Fusion 360. Uh, I suppose I could say I'm glad I didn't spend any more time uh, printing the parts and then building the car and then realising the syringes couldn't handle the pressure. And I'm also quite pleased that I was thinking on a similar wavelength to the way that this car works. Uh, and how this car works so well uh, obviously proves that that slider valve is the way to go for an air-powered car. Now if you guys are interested in uh, copying this design of car, I will be posting the 3D printer filament files for the steering column at the front here and also the bottom mount at the rear uh, onto Thingiverse. Link will be in the description below, as well as the link to the actual air powered car so that you can build uh, your own air powered radio control car for relatively cheap. So that's the end of this video. Uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this little Amazon uh, air powered car toy modification video, <laughs> then uh, please leave a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please click subscribe and a huge, huge thanks to all of my patrons. You make these videos possible and I couldn't do these videos without you. So huge, huge thanks to you guys. And if you wish to support my videos and allow me to continue making them, then uh, it'd be grateful if you could support me on Patreon. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.